Imagine you have a list of things, you know, like numbers, names, or groceries. Now you want to do something to each item in that list and get a new list back. That's exactly what JavaScript map function does. It is a built-in JavaScript method used to transform each item in an array and return a new array. Think of it like a conveyor belt in a factory. Each item on the belt goes through the same transformation process and comes out the other side, changed, but still in the same order. To get a better feel for how the map function works, let's see it in action. But first, quick pause for our sponsor, Nada. Ever been in a meeting or an interview and thought, ugh, I wish I didn't have to take notes right now? Yeah, same. That's where Nada totally comes in clutch. It records your conversations, transcribes them live, and even gives you a neat summary of the key points. It works with Zoom, Google Meet, Teams, just drop in the meeting link. You can also upload audio or video files in pretty much any format. And here's the cool part. Nada doesn't just transcribe, it thinks with you. With AI chat, you can actually ask questions like, what did we decide in last week's client meeting? Or what happened in the last stand-up meeting? And it'll pull the answer straight from your team's recordings. No digging through folders or docs. Just ask, and it finds it in seconds. Bonus, it supports multiple languages, detects who's speaking, and can even translate or format summaries however you want. It's like having an AI sidekick who never misses a thing. Want to share stuff? You can send transcripts to your team or make them public with one click. And it's fast. We're talking minutes, not hours, to process a full recording. Nada's accurate, super easy to use, and saves a ton of time. <laughs> and right now, if you sign up with your work email, you'll get 20 free online meetings to try it out. No more scribbling notes or forgetting what was said. Just clean, clear transcripts ready when you are. Give Nada a try. You'll wonder how you ever worked without it. All right, so let's keep learning and dig into that map function example to make it crystal clear. Picture an array of numbers like one to four. You wanna double each number to get a new list like two, four, six, and eight. That's where the map function comes in. It takes each number, runs it through a function you give it, and spits out a new array with the results. Super simple, right? The map function method loops through each item in the numbers array using the num parameter. You can name this parameter anything you want, like number or whatever. It's just a placeholder. To keep it simple, let's stick with nam. The method then applies the function num times two to each item, and the results are collected in a new array. The original numbers array stays untouched, which is awesome because you don't want to mess up your starting point. We can also work with strings using the map function. For example, let's say we have an array called names, and we want each name to have an exclamation mark at the end. So we create a constant named shouts that will store the result of mapping our names array. Then we define our placeholder, let's call it name, and add an exclamation mark to it. If we console log this, we should see each name with an exclamation mark. Now that you understand the basic syntax of the map function, let's explore how to apply it in a real world use case that you might encounter during development. Suppose you're working on an e-commerce platform and the backend sends you a list of recent orders. Each order is an object containing details like ID, customer info, total amount, and timestamp. Your task is to extract each customer's name and store them in a customer's array. This is a very common task in real development work. First, let's create a constant called customers, where we will map the orders array. Next, let's add a parameter placeholder named order and access the customer name using dot notation. This will allow us to map each object and extract only the customer field. Finally, let's console log the customers array to see our output. Now, the team wants you to extract the date from the orders data and make it more human readable. To make the dates in the orders data more human readable, we can modify the mapping to include both the customer name and a formatted version of the created at timestamp. First, let's create an arrow function that returns an object. This allows us to store multiple properties instead of just one. For example, we can create object keys for the customer and date, which we can access using dot notation for customer and created at. If we log this, we'll see customer names paired with raw timestamps, which aren't very user-friendly. Let's format the created at timestamp into something more readable. Here, we can use JavaScript's date object to convert our raw timestamp to a date. Next, let's use to locale date string with options to format the date as month, day, and year in the US English locale. When we log the output, we'll see the customer names and dates formatted as intended. If you don't understand JavaScript's date object, don't worry, we'll create a video about it, so stay tuned. Now that you know how to extract and format data using the map function, let's dive into how to use map to render DOM elements easily. The map function in JavaScript is a powerful tool for rendering DOM elements dynamically especially when working with arrays of data. For example, we have a products data set, which is an array of items with ID, name, price, and in-stock status. Now let's create an index.html file and in the body, include a script tag with the products data from above. Next, in the body, 
Let's create a div element with an ID and class of product list. This will serve as our container where we will map our data. Now let's focus on the script tag. Here, let's select our container div and store it in a constant called container. Next, let's use the map function to iterate over the product's array. Inside the map function, let's name our parameter product. And inside our function again, let's create a constant called card, which will be a div element to hold each product's data. Let's assign the class product card to the div so we can style it later. To add DOM elements inside the card, let's use the inner HTML property and set it to a template literal enclosed in backticks. Template literals are particularly useful for generating dynamic content. For example, inside the template literal, let's create a heading for the product name, a paragraph for the price, and another paragraph for the stock status. The dollar curly braces syntax in JavaScript is part of template literals and is used for string interpolation. It allows you to embed JavaScript expressions, such as variables or conditional logic, directly into a string, which is then evaluated and replaced with the result. For example, here we insert the dynamic product name, price, and stock status. Now that we have that, let's return the card. The return statement in the map function is necessary because map creates a new array using the values returned by the callback function for each item in the original array. Without the return statement, the map function would return undefined for each item, resulting in an array filled with undefined values. Now, after using the return statement to get our array of cards, let's use the foretch method to append each card to our container. With some styling, we can see that our container and the list of product cards are rendered properly. What you've learned is a fundamental aspect of web development, especially for frameworks like React. Rendering dynamic content and effectively extracting and manipulating DOM elements to achieve the desired output. And I know we've covered a lot of concepts today, which is why we've created a playbook for this video. It's free for our Kofi members, so be sure to check it out. And hey, check out Nada if you want an easy way to turn your voice or video content into accurate transcriptions. It's a great tool for creators and learners alike. Mastering the map function will allow you to transform data more efficiently, making your JavaScript code cleaner, more readable, and more functional, especially when working with arrays, APIs, and dynamic UI rendering. We'll continue exploring many useful and beginner-friendly concepts like this on our channel, so make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay updated. Well, that's it for now, Novus. Thank you so much for watching.